Welcome back to Hobby Jogger Elite. My name is Connor, and today we are, of course, talking about the Asics Juggernaut, the Nova Blast 3. It didn't take me very long to get the shoe to 50 miles, and I was really excited to share some of my thoughts on it once I got to that sort of threshold, as I've definitely put this shoe through its paces at this point when it comes to different kinds of runs, different types of intensities, and I have some thoughts on this shoe as per usual. So like I usually do with reviews, we'll talk some of the numbers, some of the facts, some of the specs, and then get into some of my likes, some of my dislikes, and a sort of final verdict on whether or not I would recommend buying this shoe to those out there interested in doing so. So let's get to it. At my men's size nine and a half, this very pair of Nova Blast 3s comes in at 9.1 ounces or 256 grams, which for a seemingly daily trainer, I would say seeming because it does have a sort of diverse use case. It can definitely cover a number of different areas in your training arsenal. This is pretty lightweight, you know, in the nine and a half men's size 10 range, which is typically where I am operating depending on the brand. Usually you see daily training trainers anywhere from the upper nine ounce region up to even almost 12 ounces. So this being just a hair over nine ounces is definitely lightweight considering things like the Invincible, things like the New Balance Fresh Foam, which are daily trainers that I've used recently that are noticeably heavier than this shoe. So definitely a thumbs up for being lightweight in that category. Now the drop for the brand for a lot of different companies have reported that the Nova Blast is a eight millimeter drop, but I use a website when it comes to sort of gathering gathering some data for my reviews called Run Repeat, which is also a great resource for shopping for shoes. If you sort of want to find the best deals, they give a complete list of that shoe's sort of listings on different websites, which ones are the cheapest, where they're having a sale, all of that kind of stuff. And in their lab test, Run Repeat actually found that a Nova Blast 3 has a stack height of 37.2 millimeters in the heel and 30 0.4 millimeters in the forefoot, which is actually a higher stack height than is being reported by the brand, which gives it just under a seven millimeter drop at 6.8, which is far more enticing to me as a running shoe consumer. Anytime I see a very steep heel to toe drop, I feel like I'm pretty cognizant of that drop. I find my comfort region to be somewhere in like the four to six millimeter range. That's why I like running in New Balances so much. So seeing that the actual measurement for the Asics Nova Blast 3 is actually in the six to seven millimeter range, obviously dependent on whether you get a men's shoe or a women's shoe, probably dependent to some extent on the size of that shoe is actually a plus. The very ample midsole in the shoe is made up of FF Blast Plus, which to my observation and in my humble opinion is a much needed improvement on a lot of the midsole compounds we have seen in ASICs in the past. I am very used to sort of like the old school gel ASICs shoes, which pretty much have turned me off from buying any ASICs shoes since 2018 when I kind of got into being a bit more intentional with the shoes I bought for running. I've just kind of stayed away from ASICs because I sort of knew that what they would call tried and true construction of the shoe, which in reality to me, a majority road runner, felt like I was running on top of cinder blocks. There was no give, there was no responsiveness, there was no support in my past experience with ASICs. So running in a shoe like this was night and day for me when it came to that midsole compound. In terms of the outsole, definitely plenty of rubber coverage, but not too much. This rubber isn't the hardest rubber either, so it definitely doesn't deaden or nerf that sort of lovely feeling that you get, that compression and rebound from the FF Blast Plus midsole. And I think it will prove to be pretty durable when it comes to that rubber coverage, which again, is just covering the regions that it needs to. Not too much, not too little. And the one thing I do need to mention when it comes to ASIC shoe, it's a similar observation with Adidas shoes. These are long shoes. Again, my sort of sweet spot for a shoe is like nine and a half to 10 in a men's size, somewhere in between. If they had like a 9.75 size men's shoe for most brands, I think I could get away with 
just buying the same size for everything. But I think I honestly could have went a half a size down to almost a size nine for these because I do have a, not a ton of room in them, but definitely a little bit. It's an observation I had as well with the Adidas Adios Pro 3, which again, Adidas and Asics, kind of known for running a little bit long when it comes to their shoes. And this is definitely not for the most wide-footed people, but I wouldn't call this a particularly narrow shoe. It is somewhere in between there where you don't have a ton of extra room to sort of splay your toes out, but you don't feel like things are being constricted. Again, this shoe sort of having the right amount of everything. That's kind of what I'm finding through my first 50 miles. Multiple long runs, running at multiple paces, everything from easy recovery pace up to sort of marathon paced efforts in this. It can definitely get the job done and it feels like a great sort of in-between sort of shoe that can check a bunch of different boxes, accomplish a ton of different tasks. So that sort of leads into my likes. When it comes to this shoe, and again, if you've been watching my channel, you've watched my other shoe reviews, like my thoughts on, for instance, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, I really value a shoe that can accomplish a number of different tasks, particularly one that feels just as good on a recovery run of you know, six, seven, eight miles up to a 20 mile long marathon, long run workout. I've taken this not quite to 20 miles. I've taken it to about 16 miles at the max for my long runs. And I've done recovery easy runs in this and I found it to be equally as capable in each of those instances. So I definitely appreciate how versatile of a shoe the Nova Blast is. Another thing I love about the Nova Blast 3 is definitely how premium it feels. Now it definitely comes at a price, which I will talk about in my dislikes, but you know, when it when it comes to a shoe that you're buying, it's definitely an investment for everybody, especially these days as running shoe prices seem to be skyrocketing with every new iteration. But Asics, even though in the past, not now, but in the past have had, you know, have left quite a lot to be desired in terms of the forgiveness and the forgiving nature of their midsole compounds, have always put together some of the best, most dialed in premium uppers when it comes to the materials they use for shoelaces, for the tongue, for the upper material in general, to the heel counter. I mean, it is not rock hard, but it's pretty close to being there. But for being rock hard, it has tons of flush cushion. Again, a very breathable tongue. It's like the perfect amount of breathability while also feeling like you have your foot well supported and wrapped by that upper. I love how premium and how sort of well taken care of you are when you buy an ASIC shoe when it comes to that upper. So this upper, no doubt that it's gonna last a very long time. And again, I've sort of indicated some of my other likes about this shoe. It's nice and bouncy. The midsole is fun. It's lively underfoot. There are a lot of shoes out there when you start to pinch pennies that you sort of give up that lively, fun ride when it comes to your running experience. So sort of investing a little bit more in a shoe like the Nova Blast gives you that, that reason for having fun with shoes on the run. And when it comes to my dislikes, I don't have a, a ton outside of the price. I think my complaint will always be the price because I got very lucky, not with Asics having a sale on this shoe, but with finding a sale on Zappos that happened to get me down closer to the 100 dollar price range for the shoe. I was very grateful to find that coupon code when I did because no matter where you look for this shoe right now, it is $140, which is its regular retail price. I have always had a tough time finding the Nova Blast on sale and $140, no matter what kind of shoe it is, just feels expensive. And I know that's sort of the norm, that sort of 100, I would say 130 to $160 price range is sort of what you're looking at for a daily trainer at this point in time, which, you know, it is what it is, but you definitely like to find those sort of hidden gems that are a little bit cheaper. That's not gonna be the case with the Nova Blast 3. Beyond that though, I don't think I have a ton of other dislikes. I was afraid that I was gonna feel like the shoe was incredibly overrated because it seems like every single person who runs in it has so much praise for it, says it's the greatest non play shoe that you could possibly buy. I was definitely skeptical. Anytime everybody is sort of unanimous on liking something, I'm going to be that guy who's like, yeah, I don't know about this, but I do know about it now with the Asics Nova Blast 3 because I've definitely fallen in love with the shoe through 50 miles 
and I look forward to putting even more miles in it. So those are my complete thoughts on the ASICS Nova Blast 3. Definitely excited to hop on the Nova Blast Wave 3 iterations into its existence. Interested to see how ASICS continues to innovate after this amazing invention they have walked into, which is the Nova Blast. Have you run in the Nova Blast 3? Any of the earlier iterations, what do you think about the Nova Blast? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. It's been another video from Hobby Jogger Elite. We'll catch up soon. Peace.